Okay, now that we finished the login activity layout, we're starting to developing its Java class. So to do that, first we're going to find the Java class file. So we're going to look for app Java, the first folder, and we'll find the login activity. We'll click on it and then let's start developing it. First, I will declare the two edit text that we put on our layout. And to do that, I'll go here inside the public class login activity before the onCreate method and I'll declare the two edit text as private because they're just going to be called on inside this class. And I'll call them username view and password view. And after that, we're going to associate these two edit texts with the layout and to do that we use a very simple method that is called find view by id simply we call the to edit text that we just declared we force it to be edit text with this parentheses parentheses edit text and we say find view by id and we put the id that we declared on the layout so I give these two edit texts, uh, the ID's username and password. So I just uh, I will just write r dot id dot username, and I will do the same thing with the password. So r dot id dot password. And after that, we're going to declare the login button. And here we have an interesting fact. Basically, you have to declare the button as a final variable. If you don't know what a final variable is, I'll explain. It. It's to you. Basically, it's a variable that will never change its value after an assignment. Any attempt to assign a new value to a final variable after assignment will result in a compiler error. And when you declare a button after you declare it, you are going to use a method called setOnClickListener that basically understands that a user has clicked on the button and allow it to do something after this action happens. When you use this method, it will make a reference to the login button. And when you declare it as a final variable, the object instantiated from the inner class receives only the value of the variable at instantiation. And the inner class instance do not have any reference to the variable. So okay, after you declare the login button, you're going to call the set on click listener method, and inside it you're going also going to call the on click method. And basically inside the on click, you're going to do what you expect that your app does after the user click on login. So after the user clicks on login, it's good to make a verification, uh, see if the user has filled all the texts. And to do so, we're going to create a boolean that is called validation error, and also a string that is called validation error message to form the message that will display if the user has forgotten to write on any edit text. So after declaring the boolean and the string as I did, I'm going to go to the strings XML file and declare some strings with the message that we would display if any error happens and I'll make some logic with if and else using some methods that I will create so I'm going to create a private boolean method that is called is empty to see if an edit text is empty so basically inside this method I'm going to verify if the edit text string has a length bigger than zero and if it has a return false because the edit text is not empty otherwise I will return true and now that I already declared the private method I'm going to call it inside an if basically if the username view is empty. I'm going to set the validation error to true and I will append to our error message a username. So the message would be please insert a username because there is no. And I will do something similar with the password view. But if the validation error is already true, I will add end to the message. If not, I'll just add a password to the message. And basically, I'll finish the sentence with a dot. And if the validation error is true, I'm going to show a toast text that is a, a simple way to display errors in your app. That is like a little box that appears on the bottom of the screen while the user 
is using the app and it will show the message error and then the user won't be able to log in because I placed this return here and it, it will leave the method. And basically if the validation error isn't true it's because everything is okay. So I'm going to set a progress dialog. That is something good if you have to do something like the login that you have to search for the username and the password in a database and that's something that takes time and the user doesn't know if the app is working or not if there's nothing saying that it is working so the progress dialog do this to make our progress dialog a little bit more professional, we're going to use a custom style for it. So we're going to declare the progress dialog and to declare it, you have to tell which context we, you are going to display it and the context basic is the activity that you are going to show it. So it's the login activity. And also you're going to say what style should have the progress dialog. We're not going to use the default style, you're actually going to use a custom one that we're going to make. So I'm going to call here the r.style alert dialog theme. That is the theme that we're going to make. And to make this style, we're basically going to search for the style.xml file. It is on the app folder, whereas it's inside the values folder and it is below the strings xml file. It's called styles xml file. And there you can see first that we have some colors, basic colors for the app. We're going to change it. We're going to set the two primary colors of the app to black because it fits better with our design black and white and color accent for the app it's going to be white to make a good contrast and here at this file we're going to declare the alert dialog theme and we're going to set its parent as the app compat light dialog alert so basically in the alert dialog theme we're going to have the possibility of having two button styles the negative and the positive one so we're going to refer to negative and positive buttons style that we are going to declare now and basically I will declare here the negative button style. I'll set its parent as a button bar alert dialog because I want this button to have this kind of uh, behavior. But the only thing I'm going to change is the text color. I'm going to make it red when it's negative. And I'll do the same with the positive button style. I'll just change the color. I will change it to green. And I'm just going to come back to the alert dialog theme style to also refer to the positive button. And I will also place on the alert dialog theme some primary colors. I'm going to change the primary dark to green and the color accent of the alert dialog theme to pink. Because for example, the progress dialog has an image that shows that something is loading on the app and the color accent of the app is white and the alert dialog will have a white background. If we place a color accent like white, it's not going to show anything, so I'm going to change the color for a pink one. And I think everything is fine. You see that the Java class has already recognized the style that I just made. Now I'm just going to set the messages of the progress dialog. So I'm going to declare some strings on strings XML file because I will always do this. I won't write strings on the Java class. I'll just write on strings XML file for organization and to be easier to translate my app, for example, if I need to. Uh, I'm going to write some strings to ask the user to wait a bit while the, the app is logging in. And I'll set this wait message as the title of the progress dialog. So here inside the dialog.setTitle method, I'm going to uh, call the strings. It's very important to use the getString method. If you just use the ID of the string, it may not find the string and may use some trash value, so we don't want this. So I'm going to use the getString and after I'll use the ID that I just set on the strings XML file. And as the message of the dialog, I'm going to use the login strings. And after that, you just need to show the progress dialog because it's basically created and it has the title and the message. And to do this, you just call the show method. It's also good to reset errors to avoid not letting your user to log in after something went wrong. So I'm going to use set error to the edit text views as new. And now finally, I will use the method to log in using back for app that is really, really simple.
To do that, I will go to back for app documentations and I'll just follow the instructions there because it's really easy. So here, to find back for app documentation, you just access your account, you log in, you go to help and guides. And here you can see many documentation for many technologies. As you have already seen on previous classes, I'm just going to click on Android technology user registration login page. Here I see that I have some prerequisites to do the login using back app. I should have an app created on back app, I have one. An Android app connected to back app, we are already connected. Our app with back app and a device for an emulator and we have all this. As we have all the prerequisites, I'm going to start. So this documentation is for sign up and logging and as we're going to do the sign up later i'll skip the steps that evolves it so we're going to import these things on our activity there is a probability that you have already imported some stuff so we're going just to copy and paste all the things we should import and if we are importing it twice it won't be a problem and we can erase it after. So I'm going to do this. Everything looks great because it seems like we're not using anything that we just copy and pasted. But after I follow all the documentation, I'm going to see what is gray and erase. Now I'm just going to leave everything here. So now I'm going to stop tree that is a login and it says that I have to import also this method on this activity. So I'm going to import it as well the login callback from Parse. And basically to implement user login, it's really simple. You just have to use this code and we're going to copy it right after the progress dialog and the reset errors. And you can see that we have some stuff that is in red. And if it's in red, it's something that you have to change or that is wrong. Here is something that you have to change. So you have to pass the username and the password to the method. And our username and password are on the D text. So I'm going to write username, get text to a string. So to pass the string of the username. And I'm going to do the same thing with the password. I will also do something here. After you show the progress dialog, you must dismiss it when you don't want it anymore because if you don't, the progress dialog will stay there forever. And so when the login is done, it's good that the progress dialog doesn't appear anymore. So it's good to dismiss it after the login background is done. So inside the method done, you should dismiss the dialog by just calling dialog.dismiss and you, you see that there is also two things right here so in the message of the alert displayer we want to display like successful login, welcome back and the name of the user so we should pass the string of the username as we did on the call of the method in the beginning and you also see that here you have a string that is declared on the Java class that is something that I told you that is not good so I'm going to declare it on the strings XML file and then I will modify the Java class to call the strings XML file for good practice. At the documentation you can see the alert display method it's here i'm going to copy and paste it but i'm not going to use the default layout of the alert displayer so i'm going to paste it and modify it a lot so basically i'll start modifying by adding another argument to this method i'm going to set a boolean that calls error so basically if the login get some error the alert displayer will know what it should do like if it's an error it won't move to the next activity and if everything's all right it will just go to the menu activity and as i'm going to make a custom layout for this alert displayer i will have to declare a view and we're going to create this layout file for the alert dialog so to do this you're going to find the app rest folder and you find the layout folder and with the right button you click on it and you go on new and layout resource file. I'm going to call this layout for this alert display dialog default and we intend to do something like this. That is simple but it's sophisticated at the same time and to do this we are going to use a linear layout. We don't need to do a scroll view here because it's like just a 
a little box that's going to show on the cell phone and it's really difficult for it to be bigger than the screen of the cell phone so the linear layout is fine we're going to set its wide of to match its parent and it's high to just wrap the cons of the alert style. I'll set some margins, but this time I won't use the margin attributes. I'm going to use padding. Now set its orientation to vertical. And then I'll use a background that is basically a shape to make our alert dialog a little bit rounded on the corners. And you have already done a shape before, so it's an XML file that you do on the drawable folder. So we're going to do this. You will find the drawable folder, click on this with the right button, the new and drawable file resource. And then we're going to call it dialog underline BG, that's short for background. So I'm simply copy and paste it. It's not going to be the same uh, shape, it's, but it's going to be similar, so that's why I'm copying and pasting. I'll make this shape a rectangle. I want this with a solid color. I want it to be white, so I'm going to call the solid attribute and set the color to white. And here I will erase this part and set the corners to all of them to have a radius that's a little bit bigger than I did before. That is 12 dp. Now our, our alert dialog should look just fine. I will refer to the shape that I just created on the background item of the layout. Now you see the shape that we just created. Now I'm going to add two text fields to the shape. I'll make this a little bit differently. I will use the design page to do this. I'll find the text field and I'll just grab and put it here and then I'll have two text fields. So when I see on the text I see that Android Studio helped me declaring this text view and now I can make some change like the text color and the margins and I'll just make some modifications here on the text because I think it's easier. I'm going to change also the font family for this text view. I will set it to to regular and it's really important to give this text view IDs because as we have a custom alert dialog we will have two places to place the texts we want the alert display to display so the java class will have to know in which text view each message will be displayed so i'm going to call one of the text views title and the other one message and to finish i'm going to place this ok button but i want to make a special alignment to that i want to place this button on the left side of the layout and to make this alignment it's easier to declare another linear layout and set its gravity to the end. I will also set the orientation of this linear layout to horizontal and adjust some margin. And I'll place after that the button. I'll make some adjustments as text color, gravity, the ID of the button. But it's nothing that you haven't seen before. And as the background of the button, I'm going to use the button black XML file that we declared before. I will also set the text of the button as ok and now we can see that our custom alert dialog looks just fine the way we want it to be and we can continue on our java class so here as we have the layout and we called it we have to declare the text views that our custom alert dialog layout has as we did with the edit text on the beginning of this activity it's interesting for you to notice that it, we are declaring it a little bit differently because we have to declare the find view by id from the view that we just created because it's like the alert displayer will be another view view in front of the activity. I will also declare the OK button as confirm button and I'll set the text of the text views as the title and the message of the alert displayer that are basically the two strings that the alert displayer method receives and then I'll build the view of our alert dialog and after that I can create the alert dialog by using the builder.create method. I will also make the alert dialog a little bit transparent and to do that I will use this method that gets the window of the dialog and set its background drawable to something and then I will set its color as a little bit transparent and then I'm going to show 
Peddler dialogue. And there were also sets on click listener methods for the confirm button. And basically to change from a uh, activity to another, we use the intent class. So we create an intent from one activity to another. So from the login activity to the menu activity. As we don't have the menu activity yet, I will redirect to the main, main activity. And we add some flags to make the process a little bit faster. And then we start the activity intent. We also cancel the alert displayer. If we come back to the alert displayer method, we see that it's in red and it's basically because it is missing an item that is the set error to false. That is the error attribute. So I'm going to set it to false because basically if we are on this alert display is because the login was successful so there's no error and and when the login doesn't work, we're going to show an alert displayer with the title as an unsuccessful login, the message as the error message. So to do that, you just call e on the error dot get message, and we'll also add another message before the error, telling the user that due to this error, he can't log in, but he should try it again. And to finish, I'm going to set the attribute of the error as true. And basically, this is the code for our login it should work just fine. To end this lesson, we're going to do the reset password part and then we'll test our app and make any arrangement if anything is wrong.